Good morning. I had to run by the visit with someone before they went into surgery this morning here in the hospital. I got another one on the other side of town and yeah, in, in the hospital. Just people stacking up. That's all right. I thank God that I'm getting a little better every day and I pray he continues to sustain us. First cup of coffee. It's late in the day. Mm. Pretty good. Thank y'all all. Some of y'all might think I'm a coffee snob and this this is actually this is community. Good old-fashioned community, but it is the Louisiana blend whole bean. It's very good. Uh, my favorite community blend actually is the Evangeline blend, but this is good stuff too. You know, I was in the hospital myself, and a little surgeon, we're recovering. I got, like I said, two in the hospital this morning, and made me have to wonder, you know, about all this that we've got going on, and who. In the midst of it, we're on day 10 of our 21-day fast today. Uh, we're going to wrap up the book of John. Um, in my reading this morning, I didn't get farther than about the, the first part of my readings today in John chapter 11, but it's a wonderful place to start. You know, it's a story in John chapter 11. It's when um, Jesus was told that Lazarus was dying. They said, you need, to go. you need to go, you need to go. He's not doing well. And we have everything, you know, that goes through the story. And... Um, but at one point, there, whenever Jesus is there with Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sister, Jesus said this, John chapter 11, this is verse 25 and 26. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. No one who believes in me will die, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Then he asked her a question. Do you believe me? You know, when I'm in the hospitals and we're praying for those who are sick and we're praying for those who are dying, we're praying for those who need salvation, and we always realize that all of those have two lines that are coming through and that the line that they actually live, which is to live here on earth, and that's part of John 10.10 10, and that abundant life portion. But then God's always talking through Christ or considering the eternal life, that we shall never die, as he said there. But... I think every now and then God wants to look us in the eye and kind of do like he did to Peter and said, Peter, do you love me? You know, I asked him three times, but at this point Jesus stopped and he looked at, you know, at Mary Martha and asked this question. He said, do you believe me? I think sometime every now and then Christ wants us to stop. And as we get into his word and read his word and pray as we're doing now in this time of fasting, every now and then I think he still wants to ask us that question, do you believe me? Do you believe me? Why would he ask that? I think it's the same reason why when he was asking Peter, do you love me? And as Peter would say yes, and he'd say, feed my sheep. He wasn't asking just for Peter to give him lip service and say yes. He was giving him something that he could actually watch. Whenever Christ watch you in your day-to-day -day Christian life, do we live our lives as though we believe the word? Do we live our lives as though we believe that every word that proceeds from the mouth of God is life-sustaining to us? Do we believe? Do our actions show that? You know, if you're cutting somebody off on the way to way to drive into church and when you whip in the parking lot in front of them and they pull in behind you and they're a visitor they have to wonder say, what does this person believe you know our actions do matter they really do now, i understand fully that our our grace is you know and our salvation comes through through grace and not through works but you know what our works do matter james teaches us that do your works do your actions show that you actually believe in Jesus Christ? I was in a hospital one time when I was working and I uh, had a man, two men in the beds. I was in the old days. I'm old when we had two in a room. And one asked him, he says, hey, are you, a, are you a Mason? You know, they were they were part of the Masonic Lodge. And it made me think because it used to be that you didn't, wouldn't have to have to ask because you should be able to tell by their words and their actions the, that they that they were. I believe we should be the same way in our Christian life. No one should have to stop and ask you, are you a Christian? Or even worse, if they look at you and say, are you a Christian? Judging off of what your actions are. 
So I want you to go back and as you're reading in John today, go back and look there in John 11, 25, and 26. When you get to that part, do you believe this? Do you believe me? I wonder what your reaction is. What you think about that. Let me pray for you this morning. Lord God, I'm so thankful you've given us the opportunity to be able to go into your word. I'm thankful for your word. I'm thankful, you, Lord God, that you've given us the knowledge and the ability to be able to read your word, Father God, and have it pour into us and become life sustaining to us. I pray, Lord God, for all those in the sound of my voice. I pray for all of those who are in the hospital, those, Lord God, who are in need of a touch. We, we pray for them this morning. We intercede on their behalf. We pray for their healing, Lord God, because we do believe. We believe when your word says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We believe that, Lord God, and then we're acting upon that this morning. I pray, Lord God, you bring us all back together again safely. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, look, y'all know God loves you. Please don't forget I love you too, and you just keep being awesome and drinking all the coffee you can get a hold of. See y'all tomorrow.